One, two, three, four. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and ge ge gentlemen. That's right, the big dick is here. Get ready. May we start? Rockwell Podcast, Rockwell Podcast Dash Radio. Tasty Twosmakers. I always say that shit. That's what it's called from now on, Tasty Twosmakers. Um, I got two wonderful co hosts right beside me, and I have a feeling it's going to be our best episode ever. It's, I think it's episode nine. Episode nine, we just getting started. We the hottest podcast in the world, hottest new podcast in the world. Yes. And um, first I want to introduce Smooth. Introduce yourself to the people, please. Yes, hello, hello, beautiful people. My name is Smooth. You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter at Smooth Sense. That's S-M-U-T-H-E-S-E-N-S-E. -E -E. Don't be senseless out here, little baby. Keep up. Shit, she's throwing shots a little baby. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> Wait, a little little baby. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Second, we got uh, Stephen Marcus Rutherford. Yeah, the yeah. Fourth. You you get almost had it. <laughs> it's okay, Stephen, the fourth. Stephen Marcus Rutherford. A Rutherford. Okay. I'm a junior. No, no, he was just bullshit. No. Oh, I was like, okay, four <laughs> generations. Okay. No, nah, yeah, 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 yeah. I want no problem. It's been five people with this name. No. no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm just out here talking shit. You know me. You might see me telling jokes on stage. Uh, you might see me working at your local fucking uh, Ralph's. You know, what's up? You need some mangoes? We there got we them go. here, two for a dollar. Yes. They on sale. They on sale. Hey, we got Ralph's Ooh. water sponsorship too. Remember, Zebra? Ralph's Ooh. water. Everybody, if you want to get thirsty and you want to drink some water, you got to go to Ralph's and get that water. It's way better than Arrowhead. All right. Way better than Arrowhead. And then your lips won't be dry. It's too hot out here for dry lips. It is. Yes. Summertime. Hey, it was my birthday, though. Let's start this off fresh. It was my birthday last Saturday. Y'all didn't even wish me happy birthday. Whoa, one I didn't know. What? And happy birthday to you. Keep going, please. I don't celebrate happy birthdays. Happy birthday. Are you Jehovah's Witness? <laughs> I don't follow birthdays. Yo, so when were you born? I don't know. I just know happy what they was Happy birthday <laughs> to you. I feel you. Hey, and also... You no, happy birthday, man. Thank you, happy brother. birthday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's Zebra's birthday next week, too. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Zebra. Hey. But happy birthday for a little. I think this is about to be the best podcast we ever did so far. I think the best <laughs> podcast in this whole He building. say that every episode. You got to watch the last eight episodes. <laughs> hey, man, I think this is going to be the best. This is going to be the best. Sometimes I'm the like, y'all, this is not going to go well. <laughs> I'm upset that this is not going to go well. But this one I feel really optimistic about. Yeah. And um, could I ask you guys real quick? Um, first of all, shout your your podcast real quick, smooth. Yes, and I also have a podcast called Senseful Podcast, S E N S E F U L. And my goal with that is to build a luxurious, wonderful community of like minded people that not just want to be better for themselves, but better for the world. Because we out here changing the world. Get with it or get lost. That, that's a double mm -hmm. entendre, right? Senseful, senseful. Is it like a Yeah, thing? like, because I was going to do senseless. Mm. But I was like, mm, that's not my vibe. I'm really senseful. I'm not senseless. So it's senseful. That, I like that. Yes. That's dope. Thank you. Steven. Yo, yeah. Marcus. Um, Rutherford. That's me, your boy. Yeah, I'm in here. I ain't got really shit going on. Oh, I, I do have a Bro. comedy album I'm dropping. <laughs> A comedy album? Yeah, I'm dropping a comedy album and the first week of July. So it's going to be a, a pay what you want album. You can just follow me on Instagram to learn more about it. Stephen Marcus Relliford. Stephen with the V. Relliford. R-E-L-E-F-O-R-D. Boom. Yeah, he a funny man. He a funny man. And he be doing comedy spots all over the city, all up and down California, all over the nation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And at the end, maybe if you got some dates, you can shout them out. You know, at the end of the day, like dates, whatever you got. No, I'm not talking about like girls and shit. I'm talking about the dates of the show. Oh, okay, I was like, I got a lot of openings. <laughs> I oh, I thought he meant like the dates. No, I was like, <laughs> some hoes, y'all want a son. I'm just playing. And uh, I yeah, <laughs> let's get to the shits. And um, we're not gonna start with no trial shit because we start on positivity on this podcast, right? When you right. know what I'm saying? It's it's a happy podcast, you know, like just like her podcast. We speak positivity. Um. I'm trying to find one positive topic on this whole list right now. And, oh, okay, can I start with this though? Cause I really do gotta say something about this. Uh, Rick Ross did a show at his house 
And that's my dream of my life because I do not like to leave the house. I don't like to go nowhere. I have agoraphobia. Look that up, ladies and gentlemen. We got a dumb audience. Some of them are dumb. You know? No, I'm, I'm joking. See, that's why you ain't, that's why hey, your audience you take, don't be fucking with you. Because you how you talk to yeah. <laughs> That's I, You I talk, talk to them like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. But Rick Ross did a show at his house, and this is one of my comments that went viral. Shout out to that doggy right there. I love doggies. Mm. Um, uh, Rick Ross did a show at his house, and I had this comment like because the comments be going more viral than the show and y'all gotta help me with that but the show is doing really great by the way it's the hottest new podcast in the world shout out to zebra so yes. i said he got a residency at his residence that's a hot ass bar can i get a amen yeah from amen. the congregation a residency amen. at his residence yes yeah, that's, that's my dream i don't want to yes. leave the crib you know what i'm saying that's he all. doesn't have to yeah i think he had thirty thousand people there thirty thousand. Oh gosh and i heard he, people were mad house. Why? I, because, I did hear that too, but why? Yeah, because they had to pay so much. And I'm like, you know, this is coming from Rick Ross, the boss. That is, that's his brand. Yeah. You know you paying top dollar. And everything in that collection was exquisite. There was nothing short of that. So what you think you're going to pay? Yeah. What do you think you're going to pay? You at his house. And shout out to LaRussell. I know LaRussell does it too in LA. And he, LA. Dude. I love LaRussell. Yeah. So shout out to him too. But this is just for Rick Ross in Georgia and his big ass compound that he got. That shit was fire that I saw. Did y'all? Did you guys see it? Like the yeah, clips and shit. Yeah, I hadn't I seen the clips, but I I support that a hundred percent. Right. I'm all about the DIY, like take it into your own hands type of shit. Because yeah, you cut out the one man, and he got thirty thousand people willing to pay whatever ticket price he gonna put on there for them to show up. Yeah. yeah. And it's just a smart move. I think more creative, especially at that level, should like take note and be doing something similar. Because, yeah, if Drake went in a route like that, that was just leaning a little bit more independent, the money that he can see and the, and the, like the, the things that, I mean, even the people that you can touch is just, is just that much more, you know, powerful and impactful. I don't want to digress, but you're leading me on a, on a whole thing because I got to ask you this. And we're going to get back to Rick Ross and we get this ADHD podcast. How do you think Drake would do if he went independent today? He has the budget, right? People always debate about this. Mm -hmm. Like, does he need a major right now? Because I genuinely want to ask, and I want to shout out Dave Chappelle because he does that at Comedy and you're a comedian. And he did that in Ohio, Yellow Springs. Um, he, he would do the shows at his um, crib. But yeah, independently, like you think, because I kind of just touched on that. I was, I was trying so hard not to expand on that. But you think Drake would be as successful now? I'm talking about like starting today. Say he went independent today. You think you would be as uh, successful, Steven? I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Why? If he's building with the same team and he just has the same quality of music, yeah. People. I mean, the kids, everybody's gravitating to the DIY shit. Yeah. You know, everybody. I mean, I, you go listen to your little nephews and your cousins music. Bro, the music ranges from a bunch of young people making their own shit. Yeah. Wherever they are making it. And they have a fan base. They have a fan base doing it. So it's like, yeah, I think he could totally do it. Uh, he'll probably see twice as much as money that he's seeing now. And yeah, I think he just have a little bit more decision making power. I'm sure he's still not able to do the things that he would like to do only because he has people telling him no. And he, if he was independent, I'm sure a lot of the decisions that he's wanted to make in the past and even up until now, he can probably do them with much more ease. That's actually really interesting. I never considered the fact that Drake was, because I thought OVO was his. OVO is his, but he's still signing Universal. And he actually, he's still under the Cash Money umbrella. But people say Cash Money is like a silent partner. Mm -hmm. So, like, Drake really isn't really, like, Cash Money's not reaping the same revenue mm -hmm. and um, from Drake's sales like they used to. But he's still under that umbrella. And... Yeah, continue because uh, yeah. I wanna... Yeah. Then with that being said, I'd be really curious to see to see um, how he evolves with him being in charge of the whole creative process and everything because I never really took that into consideration. Basically, it's like spending other people's money, right? So mm -hmm. I know Drake has like a shitload of money. He don't got Universal money. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Universal, but it's also like why not? And I don't know. And co to compare that to young up and coming rappers. It's gonna be hard to do what Drake's able to do independently, and I'm all the, I'm all about the independent route. But you can't 
compare yourself in the independent round is if Drake decided to go independent tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? Like you're not going to yeah. be in the same bracket because he got millions and millions of dollars. And you know, I would do the same thing. I agree. I would just go independent, but I think the name, and also some people don't want to invest all their own money into all this shit. That too. And to bring that back, to bring that back. Cause I'm a master at what I do. Rick Ross said, no, he need that major bag. Cause he, I saw him on drink champs and he was like, no, I need to be on a major because you want to be big. You want to be, Big. They'll push you. Yeah, and They'll you get to hit the masses. Shit. And so, yeah. like, if we look at an artist like Russ, shout out to Russ. Yeah. Um, he is not necessarily considered by people a part of the culture. I don't even think it's because he's white. I think he's not on the same playlist that the labels are able to pay for. I don't think he's necessarily a part of the same concerts, even though Russ be selling out on uh, shows. But we don't really know. I mean, at least I don't. There's no disrespect to him. I don't know a bunch of his songs because Same. he's just like, he's independent. He's not a part of the culture, meaning uh, music that we hear every day. So yeah. it's each his own. And uh, Rick Ross said he'd, uh, he'd like to do it big. And if you want to, so it's, it's, it's a preference. Like Noriega said that too. Like Noriega was like, oh, I want to be on a major. And some people could say, oh, that's a spoiled thing. That's a mm -hmm. spoiled thing. But also, it's really hard work to be independent. Don't let that shit fool oh, you. Oh, for sure. For you got to sure. be out there selling your own shit. You got to deal with a lot of disappointment. And so it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So with all that being said, I agree with what you're saying. And to add on to that, I think it just comes down to you really, as an artist, with us being artists as well, and me seeing this in myself, it's really just me wanting, me having to know what it is that I want and what is the general idea so I can take these active yeah. steps? Because for that personal person, like for example, Brent Fias, oh my oh, fine yeah, ass, Brent fine ass, okay. Mm -hmm. um, is he's he doing, independent? I think yeah, he's, he's no, he's independent. Oh, is he? Okay. But he's taken his craft into, he's he's just a brand as himself. He does fashion, he does art, he does everything. And shout out to The Weeknd that does coffee now. I love that for him, that is That's amazing. The Weeknd is a, is a super major. And the idol. Yeah, that's a great show. But that's he's a super major. Like he's on a super major. Like he's I thought he was just XO. I thought he was in the Nah, independent. so the XO is like the subsidiary. So it's basically uh, the week is universal. I don't know what yeah, universal and, and XO is underneath universal as well. Mm. So um so at the end of the day, like a lot of artists in general, like I remember when Wiz first came out, they kept it on the raps that he was on a major, but they acted like he was independent and he admits to that too. So it's like two different kind of independence. Like Russ is authentically independent. And I'm not saying one's better than the other. Cause honestly, bro, I went the independent round when I used to write and that shit is hard work. I don't want to be doing all that shit. It's a lot of work and yeah, it's like, but what she said is very important. It's about what you want to choose. Some people don't want to be as famous as Drake. Cause a That's lot true. comes with that. Not a lot of people can handle that. Yeah. So I know we starting off on this topic and it's a great topic to start off on. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just to all you young artists out there, choose what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like, cause you in comedy, Dave Chappelle, he kind of what, like, it's like a, it's not technically true, but it kind of is true. Like he was kind of on a major cause he's Comedy Central, Chappelle show, all that shit. Like he was in the Hollywood, Hollywood machine. Mm -hmm. And then he chose to leave that behind and come back independent. That's almost the same. Is if, uh, like, maybe if Drake were to do the same. Well, Drake wouldn't leave, I, I guess. But, like, it's like Dave Chappelle built up his machine through the mass marketing of the Hollywood machine yeah. and came back independent. And kudos to Dave Chappelle for doing that. And he still got his rights to the Chappelle show from Comedy Central and Netflix. So, yeah. yeah. Anything you want to expand on that? Money Steven? moves. No. Um, yeah, I, I agree. That's dope. I feel like um, when it comes to music, though, <laughs> it's like, I feel like the music can be would be completely different if we had encouraged people to go the independent route because radio would look different. Like, I don't like the radio. Yeah. I think the radio is garbage, radio. you know, so it's just like there's certain music that is popularized for some reason. Like you even mentioning that there's not a number one album it's just ridiculous to me because I'm like, you ain't heard the Ab Soul album that just dropped? Oh, like, we gonna get to that That too, shit is fire. How, but then it's like, that. who's Ab Soul? Part of TDE? Yeah, he's, that's amazing. But it's though. just like, 
<clears throat> no, no, no. But yeah. back just to like the no number one album in hip hop type of thing, yeah, yeah. right? We gonna get to that because on this episode, oh, we have a touch of oh, so I'm, I'm high. Episode, my right? bad. Yeah, yeah, you got See, this our, we done no, double back. See, take. I'm, this I'm, second I'm, take. I'm mixing and in. Now he right though. Like this is our like, second no, take. I want to let the audience know this is our second take. Of that, but we did. We'll get to that too. So there's yeah, we'll get to that. So might as well introduce that. Good segue. So there's no number one uh, hip hop. Album and no number one hip hop song of this year. So you talking about Absol? When when did Absol's album drop? Was it this year? Oh, you like, know what? It, like I, it dropped at the end of the last yeah, year. Yeah, I remember, and I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I I don't. I'm not ex- like exactly sure. I know TDE is independent, like you said. Like XO is independent, and I don't know if Absol has um, mass distribution like Kendrick got or Kendrick did have. So. Anyways, continue about it. Because what you're about to say is like, oh, it brings out better quality music. That's unique. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Like, I, it's something similar to that. It's just like, I think when the listeners are more like, the, there's more of a variety of different type of listeners and it's more vast. I think it only helps the quality of music as opposed to radio. It gives you, all right, we got these five sounds that we're going to rotate for the next X amount of years, you know? So you're only getting these five types of sounds. So it doesn't fall in this category. You're not going to get exposed to it. You're not going to get, you know, familiar with it. You might never even, you know, learn to, to like it or listen to it at all. So I think like, I think there'd be a lot like what we were speaking on earlier. Like there just needs to be good artists though. I think there are a lot of good artists. There's just not getting the shine that they deserve because maybe the industry is going through a shift or some shit, you know, maybe like collectively the industry is changing. Maybe music is changing collectively where people are talking about things that are not in the dominant narrative. So there's not a lens on it mm-hmm. as much, you know, and it's not yeah. going to number one and people are not listening to it. But I think there's a lot of cool shit that is out now that people are enjoying that could be number one, depending on who's doing the measurement and who's for doing sure. the, the listing. I, I want to j- jump in right there because I got a good parallel for that. Y'all ever heard of Two and a Half Men, the TV show? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do they play at like doctor's offices and like what is like the, the normal housewife, middle-aged housewife watch? They watch that kind of stuff. But the one thing we're not like understanding and which is hard for me to understand too is like most of America don't got great taste. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, okay, but let me finish. I want to let you finish. Like, I just want to expand on that real quick. Because, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because, but with music right now, NBA Young Boy is selling number one album. He's like number one on the charts. Not this year, but he, he's How? number one. I want to let you expel that because whether you like it or not, he got a core fan base. So he could still hit the top of the Billboard charts as an album sometimes. A lot of times he do hit number one. He got like, he's up there with Drake and all that, man. He's a pure independent artist, um, but he's not on the radio at all. So it's almost like being on HBO and being on CBS. You know what I'm saying? Mm. People watch a lot of HBO shows and they got way better quality shows, but still the masses and what people want to hear in the car, like if they're not like as in tune as us, they just turn on the radio and they'll just hear like the easy shit. So yeah, yeah, yeah continue. for sure. I just think with that being said, like you said, they just want to hear the easy stuff. People have gotten lazy. And I think that's to do with today's society, technology, yada, 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 because it's like, we want everything microwave. We, okay. I put in the work. I did a hundred crunches today. Where's my six pack. And it's just like, baby, it don't work like that. And I just think that's what the market is. Before they start coming yeah, after it's me, microwave bullshit. yeah, very true. So if people just actually put invest into good music, then it would be good music. Agree. So that's up to y'all uh, artists out there to do decipher for yourself what y'all want to do, which uh, path y'all want to follow. So I can I can say that J Cole, Kendrick, and Drake are the masters of doing both quality and yeah. masses. You know, so yeah. It is what it is, you know? And they get radio play and shit too. But like what he was saying too, radio has a sound, right? Yep. Like network television has like a, a cadence, like with the jokes and stuff. Like Seinfeld and Two and a Half Men, they got like a cadence and a, and a laugh track, like ha ha ha, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's up to y'all to decide. But I, I do believe we're going in a better direction, but I don't know about just yet. All right, um, next topic. Should we shout out your hometown real quick? I know we're going over, but because the Nuggets just won the NBA championship. Anything y'all want to say about that? Congratulations 
to the 303. Nuggets brought it home, been the underdog for years, and now we took it home. Yeah, congratulations to them. I wanted the Heat to win, but I can't deny it. You got anything, Zimmer? Mm-mm. All right, bet. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, honestly, I, didn't even want it. I just wanted to get that out the way because it just happened yesterday, but I don't mm-hmm. got much to say. That was the most boring finals I've ever seen in my whole entire life. But I got to give, that's kudos to the Nuggets because they were that dominant. So That you know, dominant. Yeah. I'm so proud of I them. I just had to get that off the list. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, while we on basketball, I don't know if you guys heard about Zion Williamson. Have you guys heard about what happened with him or not? Is that the one with the stripper um, yes, that yes. just came out? It's so funny because I just seen a meme and it was like he was wearing some kind of outfit with some mustard yellow turtleneck. And they was like, yeah, when the bitches seen that, they knew they had an easy target. And I was like, take that turtleneck off in the middle of the field. But. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what you got. That's crazy. I love that. Yeah. That was a hot take. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. All right. Yeah. yeah. I... I think it's it's unfortunate and it's silly that he got this woman pregnant, but he it happens. Pregnant. I mean, and that's the thing. He was super reckless, but it's like you're not showing a good example yeah. of what to do when one has this opportunity yeah. and success because anyone else knows, especially in that position or even similar, is like, Man, you supposed to keep all these hoes at bay. Mm -hmm. And when you touch down near their city or town, they're going to pop out. And when you leave, they're going to be happy and, you know, and then you're going to come back again. And that's just going to be what it is. Everybody going to keep it on the down low. We're going to do our thing. I got 50 other of these same women in different states. Everywhere. Everywhere. But you now you just jeopardize you. all that. Yeah. You just jeopardize. And you ain't even really got started like in that way like that. So it's like. Same with the other one. What was his name? John Morant. They're from the same John city Morant. too. John Morant. But. You, what are you talking about John Morant? Like meaning the other one with what though? I might just be throwing him in that conversation. Cause. With like how they're operating. Your legacy. In, and yeah. 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 Being yeah. really this newly being, being newly to this, this yeah. wealth and this finance and then this opportunity of being a superstar. Yep. And you kind of just throw it all away over like being silly, right? Yeah. Waving a gun on camera. Twice. And f- fucking around with thoughts that are just nationally known as such. Why yeah. would you risk splitting your seed with someone who's going to potentially throw you into court over that same seed. And it's going to just like, if you have a tree, it's just going to fucking, you know, now a part of your branches are going to fucking offshoot to this other direction because you were being reckless with with your legacy. Yeah, no, I like the way um, Bronny James handles himself. I seen him on uh, Kai Sinat's live stream. And there was a girl, this white girl, she was like, Oh, you look so much taller right now. She's like, and he's like, you don't even know me. You just met me. How you know I got taller? So it's like, I've seen his pops put in some um, influence into him. Mm -hmm. And I know Zion, his pops is in his life. And uh, we all know John Moran's pops in his his life, but it's about being more of a voice. But I'm not a father, so I don't know. And also, I can't judge anybody's taste, but... Just don't fuck up the bag in the process. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I just think with all bag. Yeah. yeah, and it's sad to see, but it's just like at this point, okay, we need to establish some kind of mentoring system if this is the situation. Because it's like, okay, to, in my opinion, it looks like John Morant. What is his team just yes been? Are they just, yeah, you're good. It's okay. It's okay. Because after that first slip up, your team should have honed in and be like, nigga, look. We need to we need to tone it down a little bit, but it's like that didn't happen for it to happen a second time. So it was just like, is everybody around him saying that it's okay? Like it's okay. And it's like yeah, he's not and, and, allowing second chances for other people. Yeah, and when yeah, like you say, yes, being around yes, man, but just probably being around that same environment that you were just mm. <laughs> coming out of just came out of it too. Yeah, doesn't help because. You have people around you who don't have anything to lose. Nothing. So they don't have the same responsibilities that you have. So yeah. like even if it wasn't him directly, I think the the other video was just like one of his friends or something like that. And it's just like, wouldn't your friends know not to be doing something like this? Not when you made it out and they didn't. 
And that's the thing. It's like, you know, that's why. He unfollowed really, that friend too. And that's his childhood friend. He unfollowed him on Instagram. It is what him. it is. Yeah, it is what that's it is. That's how it gotta be. Well, that's, that's probably, they probably still kicking it. That's yeah. like, you know, I you know how they said I have to unfollow you. Not. You know, you know <laughs> it's for obvious. But it's like, come on, man. You, you should have known that beforehand. Like, don't be, I just got in trouble for this two weeks ago. Yeah. And who was live? They was who both live. Who posted it? They- well, it was the, his homeboy, the one he unfollowed, and he was live on Instagram. But John Moran loved to go live on Instagram. But let me say this. A lot of, and I'm going to ask you guys this. Maybe you think that's why they implemented the one-year college because, like, and I'm not saying it's an education thing, but it's an environment thing, right? A lot, Like you said, right? A lot of these rappers and NBA players are from the same environment, right? Yeah. But also, it's it. NBA is a pub, uh, a private entity, so they can't behave like rappers because the NBA could take away your bag. Yeah, for sure. They and could, quick. Yeah, it don't matter. It's not up to you, you know, and you can't be a rapper. They can decide to take away your bag and that's it. So it's like, I don't know. It's just, yeah, we just need better. And I like the mentorship thing that you said in there, because sometimes I feel like the NBA just be scolding them without giving them guidance. And it's yeah. like ridiculous. Sometimes. Like guide them. But yeah, enough NBA shit because my Lakers lost and I'm like, I don't know like to talk about <laughs> the NBA, them. right? Yeah, so um, y'all got any topics? I'm going I'm to I'm scroll through this, but I want to see what topics y'all wanted to talk about real quick. Because I wanted to talk about the Barbie movie, to be honest with y'all. But, no way, <laughs> yeah. the Barbie movie? Because I'm hyped about that, but I'm, no, but I'm going to say that for the end. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, well, I personally... <laughs> I'm a Gemini. You're just- <laughs> yeah, so... Um, oh, really quick on just drama. Mm. Did you see the fight with Jocelyn Hernandez? Oh, okay. and, and the um and Big Lex. One, okay. Could you explain I, that? Because I still don't understand what exactly what happened. Okay, I don't know exactly what happened. I just know their history because Big Lex was on Jocelyn's cabaret. So it's just like Mm, and Big Lex kind of had a mouth. She was a firecracker. So that's kind of expected for them to go at it. But as far as it went, like the thing that really gets me was that Jocelyn kicked her in the privates. And it's like, Jocelyn, come on, girl. You're not from the hood no more. Like, yeah, you can fight, I guess, but let's tone it down. And then Tokyo Tony had the nerve to come on after scratching her coochie on live and Mm. say, Jocelyn, why would you do that? You're setting a bad example. Who are you? Mm, that's mm. funny. Who are you? I didn't even know that happened. You're not even happy for your own daughter. Yeah, they be hating on each other. That's crazy. It. I don't get it. But I, I just think at that point, that's just mental illness. Or is it like WWE stage shit? I don't I don't, I don't, I don't think know. so, because they be... How they had the cameras back? Well, obviously, they got cameras everywhere, huh? Cause oh, yeah, it was for Zeus. You know, Zeus, they want the yeah, drama. Yeah, yeah. I auditioned for the Bad Girls Club. Oh, you should have got that. I should have. Yeah. And one, I want to say, um, can we swear on here? Yes. I want to say fuck you to everybody back home that has something to say about me getting eliminated. Look, your mama ho. And I was on the very last stage. So was it televised? Because I didn't even know. Yeah, it was televised. Oh, can you expand on this? This is fire. Yeah. So the Bad Girls Club, it was basically an audition they had up in the Bay. I drove six hours. And uh, yeah, I was on there and I was on the last episode. I remember that show too. Damn, that's what's up. Yeah. So keep watching. You got anything to say about that? About this whole Jocelyn Hernandez? Is it- I don't watch it. I actually don't know anything about Jocelyn and Hernandez fighting and she's kicking people She's on Love and Hip Hop too, right? Yeah, she was. Yeah, so, was. and then I thought she just said that she's a mother, she don't want to be, and then she blamed <laughs> it, she blamed it on, what's her name, on, um, Deb, oh, what's her name? Not, who, um, Mona uh, Scott. Didn't she blame it, like, a lot of drama on Mona Scott, who created Love and it's just a, uh, it's this is complicated for me too. It's reality yeah, TV. It's a lot of stage stuff. That. A lot of drama. Yeah. But I saw the Floyd Mayweather fighting uh, John Gotti the third in the same fight in the mm-hmm. same bill, and that shit was crazy. The one thing I because Floyd Mayweather is my hero. Everybody know that. Um, um, uh, Even though they caught the fight hella early. Why did they call the fight? See, that might have been, I don't know. They said he was like holding, but something looked fishy with that. But I think when he was going after him, unless I'm just easily fooled, I think he was really going after, like after they called the fight and John Gotti was going after him, I saw Floyd get that hook in. And I'm just like a Floyd stand. So. My thing I is, why we'll did they know. call the fight so early? Well, not, yeah, I don't even know that, when it was, but it was just like they yeah. were both do 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 standing off. And then they're like, dude. I didn't like, even no, know this fight was happening on Sunday. It seemed like Floyd only fights on Sunday nights now. It's so weird with these exhibitions. It's all good. Like, 
it is what it is. It was. I was gonna do my research on it, but I was like, you know, somebody's gonna explain it to me because I don't know what the fuck happened. I just know mm-hmm. both those incidences happened on the same event. Yeah, they did same event. It's probably good that you don't even know about it. Like maintain your peace. Maintain your peace. <laughs> For peace. real. Yeah. Because yeah, this is all with it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really hectic. All this right. is always with it. Could we get to some more um, drama? Because like, this is take two though. Um, could we? I we have to talk about the Tory Lane shit. Like we have to talk about it. And so today he was supposed to get his sentencing. Wait, we, I thought he was sentenced already. No, nah, he was convicted, but he, they keep postponing his sentencing. Mm. And I know y- y'all already spoke your shits, but maybe y'all can say it even bigger and better this time because I got a lot to say about it. And I'm a, but Tory Lane's um didn't get sentenced. The prosecution is trying to get him to do uh. 13 years and uh, the maximum is 22 years. I got some shit to say. Could y'all start off, please? <laughs> um, so I just think that it's a little ridiculous at this point because it's like we already have the evidence. We have the call. If you believe nothing else from this trial, we have the call that he made to Kelsey, the friend. So it's just like now what are we sitting here going back and forth about? I don't understand how he's getting so many chances within the court system. Like, stop letting him appeal. You got Jose Baez, like, that's a new lawyer, so he's doing something right, because he's the one who got Casey Anthony off. So, like, that's a new mm. lawyer, but yeah. Well, before that, didn't he have some lady that got somebody off? Probably. Yeah, somebody just had some lady, she looked really nice, and I remember she had really nice uh, blonde highlights in her hair, and she got somebody off, and then somebody hired her, but they still aren't, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, I got, yeah, yeah, yeah. We already touched upon this. Maybe we could put that, that, those um, points of views back into it. It's going to give Zebra a lot of more headache, or we could repeat it. I just know that I thought Tory Lanez was innocent, but when I heard the voicemails, I was like, oh, now nah, it sounded like he did that shit. Like 50 said in power, he's like, no, nah, whatever they said he did, he did that shit. So it is, it is what it is with that. I love Tory Lanez's music. I think it's important for people to be open to changing their opinions. Mm-hmm. Based on the facts, you can't just stay like strongholded to your opinions. Yes. But yeah, S- Stevie, you got something to say about that? Uh, yeah, I think if the man's guilty and he did it, he did it. So mm-hmm. he should get the the punishment that's, that's adequate fair. to the crime that he did. They'll also say like you know, there's plenty of people who commit crimes who don't get charged or don't get thrown in jail at all. Yeah. And I don't think we should have a standard, you know, or use this as a way to completely have like this blanket um, accusation that kind of happens across the board, across all people. Name really. names, though, because in the pre-production, man, you name names. Well, Alec Baldwin, all right. <laughs> oh, there we go. And there's Les Moonves, who used to own uh, CBS. CBS. Like, there's plenty of people. There's lawmakers here in fucking California, right here in the city of L.A. that's doing some fuckery shit that hasn't been arrested or haven't, you know, been charged for some shit. So um, I think it's interesting that, you know, we can look at some cases where people have actually lost their lives and been seriously injured and harmed even more so than being shot in the foot. And they're out scot-free, probably walking across this radio station. Yeah, scratching you know? their dick and shit. Scratching and their dick. he made a reckless tweet. That was a wicked, cryptic tweet that he made. And I feel like that was just the nail in the coffin. That's what they it's said. Like, it That's should be said. more investigated. They said that uh, she would never have like pressed charges officially if he didn't tweet. You talking about Tory Lanez? Let me not go ahead and like. Yeah, Wait, but, what did I say? Dude? So, but I heard Tory Lanez, um, like Megan Stallion when they went forward, if uh, Tory Lanez wasn't talking on that shit. And sometimes I get a lot of people into trouble. So, because uh, he was, he went on the offense, offense, and supposedly that put the battery in Megan Stallion's back and um, made her really want to. Press charges. That's what she said. Yeah, she should. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. Um, and then that reminds me. So as far as her stand, because I feel like that was pretty no, neat. No, I'm checking it. Yeah, I see, I see you moving. I'm like, okay, okay. It's still going. You are. Um, but as far as like, you know, when you ask me how do I think she feels about the situation, I think that Meg is coming from a place of just losing two important people and then on top of that losing someone else, even though he's not dead, he's gone and they can't really communicate given the circumstance. Yeah. So it's just like, 
damn, bro, all this is happening and it's publicized. Everybody can see it and everybody's judging her. And I feel like she was getting more hate than he was when she was the one injured. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, cool. Like you're in jail, but my guy, she's in the hospital. And she still has to go out and perform. So it's just like, even with everything going on, she still has to do her job at the end of the day, which I think just sucks even more. Tony Ayo said that he never really ever sees um, somebody go to trial without copping a plea if the person you shot is still alive. So that might've been a bad move by Tori, just cop the plea. He probably would've gotten five. He'd probably be out in three, you know, but you know- Yeah, good behavior and shit. Yeah, so, and again, 50 Cent also said that, you know, when you feel that shit in your bones, you get reminded of it. And Megan might still have the fragments in her bones. So let's move. It's traumatizing. You never know what from that situation can trigger somebody. You got to think she's still around bright lights. She's still around loud noises. She's still around super big effects that she has to put on for us. And that might trigger her because of what she's been through because of him. 100%. I think that's the last trial we're going to go. I was going to get into the YNW Melly, but I don't have enough facts. This should just start us. Maybe next yeah. week we'll talk about that one. Um, anything y'all want to talk about? I got a couple topics, but I want to see what y'all got to talk about. Can we talk about this? Um, okay, before we talk about that. One, shout out to her shirt, XOTWOD, The Weekend. I love you. I love you, baby. Um, can we talk about the whole Gabrielle Union and okay. what's his name? Pucker Lips. Gabrielle. Oh, no, I meant to say uh, Making Good. But, yeah, we could talk about Gabrielle Union. Okay, Making Good, too. Oh, okay, okay, let's go. But Let's go on the Making Good one with um, Jonathan Majors. That's his name, Mr. Lips. Them lips be out, boy. What do you you feel about Jonathan Majors? What do you think is going to happen to him? I think with everything that is going on with his case, with his ex-girlfriend, Gotcha. Mm. (laughs) I just feel like it's just another one in the bucket at that point. And I think it's kind of sad because he just got on the scene and he's killing it. What was the first movie I seen him in? The Marvel movie? The Harder They Fall. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Killed it. He killed that that whole thing. And it's just like for this to come out and then for it to come out that um, she's lying, but his agency already dropped him. That's wild, but kudos to them. I really hope they find love. Megan's healing, glowing, looking phenomenal. When you, say another, when you say another one in the bucket, is there any more details you want to give about that? Like why? Another one in the bucket. So, okay, so when I say another one in the bucket, dang. I'm good at what I'm Barbara I gotta, Walters. I got to remember huh? that your audience are. Oh, the mic, yeah. Oh. Well, basically, um, let me just say it for you, because people- Her I, audience, I, his I, audience is. But no, let me just say, if because uh, I think, I know what bring uh, crab, uh, crabs in a barrel type of shit, but it's also, yeah. he was dating a white woman. Could, is that wrong to say? So a lot of people will say that's a lot of, yeah, that's I knew. Yeah, <laughs> so please expand, don't be afraid. I just tried to say technical because I like to uplift people. But if we've been honest, yeah, that white lady had you. She waited until, you know, things were hot and then it didn't play out how she wanted it to. Or she just didn't even think it through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she didn't think it through. And it's just like my thing is um, with us being artists now, when I meet these people, one thing that I know when I make it up there is to always be observant of other people's energies because they were in a long term relationship. And who... That's that's just wild that she decided to do this to him when he been chasing his dream and finally has made it to a point of what some people see as success. And you just did that to him. Yeah. Stopped and, all his projects. And I, I, I can't have an opinion on this matter because I'm not part of that kind of, you know, could I ask you, Stephen, like, what do you feel about that narrative or the truth behind that when. Can I just say what it is? Like, oh, when yeah. a, a black man dates a white woman, shit happens. Mm-hmm. Is that fair or is it unfair? That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> a lot of I'm not trying to get y'all in trouble. Just, this is, we gotta <laughs> speak our truth out here. Yeah, That's for fair. sure. That's fair. Yeah, we ain't gonna be on no Jess Pearly things situation. Oh, I, right I, here, I can't but, stand uh, her. Sorry. But, yeah. but um, no, that's fair to say. I think in the system of white supremacy and mistreatment, if you're gonna have. Uh, white people dating black people, you're going to come across a lot of confusion and and a lot of mistreatment only because that's just the nature of the system. You know, maybe once we could uh, eradicate racism and replace it with justice, and then we can explore that. 
But uh, as of right now, yeah, you're going to get into a lot of headaches. I, as a black man, I would encourage other black people, do not put your legacy in the hands of a white the woman. The opposition. Because uh, that could do you some trouble. Yeah. And we already dealing with enough confusion, not even cohabiting and mingling with other people as it is, even yeah. just living as a single individual. So don't add to the confusion and the mistreatment to your life like that. Yeah, no. Dr. Umar, we with you on this podcast. Is our right. Agree too, yeah, so. <laughs> we with you, Dr. U. Yeah. Right. So, um, you got any topics? I, I mean, I'm sure there's a plenty of shit that I would. I mean, y'all don't want to talk about the shit that Let's I want to talk go. about. No, I, I, I don't, don't even know nothing about basketball. Nah, I, there's plenty of. All my shit is. Yeah, yeah, no. We ready? No, no. Let's just talk some saving the planet shit, cause no, I'm just joking. No, Yo, wait, wait a minute, I'm, wait a I'm, minute, I'm, saving I'm, the planet, saving the planet. I'm joking. That's me just being toxic. And you don't want to save the planet? I'm playing the bad guy. You here. better watch. Your I love too. the planet. I'm <laughs> Earth boy, but yeah, uh huh. <laughs> you better watch. No, your no, I'm, I'm all about the positivity, or it could be negative. It don't matter. But it is random. Like nobody wants to hear. I just I want like I don't like how. Restaurants are serving country time and calling it lemonade. That's Yo, not that's lemonade. Yo, that's bullshit. You got some Y'all better yellow be hand squeezing that. in the back. Yeah. yeah for sure. For yeah. sure. And now and they, they got you top dollar for it. sparkling lemonade, which is just a disgrace. I don't need no bubbles in my damn lemonade, all right? <laughs> I need my lemonade here the way that God intended it to yeah. be. It's just wild. Have y'all had that Popeye's biscuit? I haven't. No, I haven't. It tastes like a hot pop tart. A hot pop tart. Yeah. They, they got a new biscuit or some shit. Yeah, it has strawberries, strawberries in it with icing. Oh shit! I didn't even know about this. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. It was a little too sweet, but it was okay. Hey, it is what it is. This is y'all enlightening, enlightening me to some shit that I don't even know about, to be honest with you. And that's what I'm here for, you know? For sure. So <laughs> since we're here, I would like to talk about Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade. All right, let's go. Yo, this shit blows my bonkers because. They go 50-50. And at first, I am I was very much like, okay, you know, they go 50-50. But that's not my relationship. But if she's happy with it. But now with his um, interview, and he's like, yeah, we decided to go 50-50 because we got in an argument. And I said, this is my house. And she said, wow, nice. and now she said, now we're going to go 50-50 so you can never say that again. Sir. What? So that just like, I don't, I look a little bit more into it and it's just like, okay, is, are you toxic? Like, what is this to where, why are y'all arguing? And you're like, this is my house. As if she doesn't bring tremendous things to the table beyond monetary value. But didn't she also say that she like, like cheated on her boyfriend or like if she makes more money, she'll cheat on you? I'm just playing devil's advocate. And also, I don't like that couple at all. I think they're really toxic for, for each other. I'm not a big Dwayne Wade fan either. Yeah, I'm not a Dwayne Wade fan. But, but she, so is that fair? Because she said, oh, if I make more money than you, I could cheat on you. Is that? Mm, she just said, so. I might be, I might be um, putting words into her mouth. Yeah, so I don't good. know. So to be fair, I didn't see her full interview. Yeah. Um, but... I don't see to be like I don't see her saying it like that. I just think she was referencing her old relationship and was like, "Well, I made more money than him. It was also this. It was X Y Z. Didn't he have a baby on her or something?" So it was just like a whole bunch of stuff, and it's just like, okay, if all that's going on and I'm daddy around here, I'm going out and I'm getting mine. So I get it. But. Steven, um, would you go fifty fifty? Would you make your wife go fifty fifty? No, I think that's that's some weird like uh, that's that competitive shit. You know, that's that man versus what like you know, like I don't know. We I, there's just ever since we've been on the planet forever. You know, I've only been here for thirty years or so, but we've always been in this battle, and there's just been this overarching like even when you date, there everybody's trying to one up each other. They're trying to see where they're at. You know, who's after who? Who got more points? So that's just kind of like the the antithesis of that type of energy where basically you get into this blowout argument and then you're just like, all right, well, I'm just going to go 50. We just going to go on 50, 50. And it just like that doesn't make sense yeah. because as a dude, you what, should want to pay for. Well, yeah, you should want to pay yeah. for things and you're the provider. But also what a woman makes doesn't. Like what she makes financially doesn't, 
as as a guy, it doesn't make her more attractive or less attractive. Like I would, I don't care what a woman makes, you know, financially. Yeah. So it's just like for for that to be like some weird. It's a it's weird because she's having a dick measuring contest with her Basically, husband. I feel like it takes her out of her feminine. Like, don't get me wrong, the work she does is phenomenal, and I appreciate it. But it's just like it yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes her like out of now you're trying to be a, a boss of the situation. We in the marriage. Not even trying. You have to. Like, yeah, she said that we both take care of households on our own, and most of them are of elderly people, which I get. Work for your family, but when you have, in my eyes, a man of that stature, he should be working for y'all. Yeah, you shouldn't he, have to work. You shouldn't have to contribute to that. Like that should be taken care of, especially with you playing mom to all them kids. But I think you should take care of yeah, both sides. I think what it really boils down to, I told my homeboy this yesterday, he's going through a toxic relationship. And he was like, oh, I'll pay for it. But I think all men want is a girl to offer. But I don't think like, I think I'm old school with it. I think a oh, guy should pay for everything, but a girl to offer and she can help out with you get. That's fine. But it's uh, to me that like ruins the, I don't know the sexiness of the relationship, but I know that Gabrielle Union wants to be a boss lady. And if she wants to pay, she wants to pay. She wants to do that. It seems like she's the one who's pushing it more than her. But so it's up to her at the end of the day. But I don't know if Dwayne but, Wade wants her to do it or what. Yeah. I mean, I could see. I mean, I've definitely been in her shoes where it's like, oh, so you feel like I have no say so because you paying the bills and you're not yeah. considering what I'm contributing to this situation. Yeah. All right. Let me show you then. But it's just like, that's not something me personally that I want to be in because if I'm with somebody. Because that makes it more adversarial. You're not trying yeah. to be in no fight with your mate. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm looking to She's also for older you. than him and she's been famous longer. But I'm, I'm just saying that's what she probably feels that way. Like, oh, I, I got my money on my own. I want to keep. So I don't know. I really don't know anything about this. I don't about this conversation, but I don't know. All I know is if I'm a man, I want to take care of my woman like that's how i would li like to feel but if she want to take care of herself she could too like it's up to you know i'm gonna say something there. but sure. switch gears y'all think kanye west can make a comeback this year rip me out the plastic i've been acting brand new um mm. can he make a comeback brand me, per me personally i don't i'm not really feeling kanye i'm kind of i mean i appreciate him for his contribution to the industry the music industry, but I don't know. He's one of those, another one of the book is in the barrel. Well, I just wish he had more support. This topic is getting, well, actually you were speaking boldly about it, but I feel like this topic gets real quiet some nowadays with Kanye West. With but, Kanye West. Yeah, like in general, but you, yeah, so continue. I just want him to be, I just, like, I don't know him personally, obviously, but I just want him to experience happiness with self and fulfillment within self and the people that you have around you because it's just like lately it seems like the people that he's had around him before he's made this big change are um energy vultures and just vultures of what he has to offer instead of enabling him to want to do better and be better for himself what yeah. do you think steven uh i think he could make a comeback me too um in music or in he like always everything, make a comeback. Like I think people just forget. Cause yeah, I think yeah. We even though I don't like some of the decisions that he's made, even him getting recently married again, like randomly overnight. I think that's really <laughs> strange. Uh, I think that should be looked into in, in some way. The whole thing is strange. Now it's the very kids strange. are hanging out. I don't even know if it's official. I think it's like a fit. Like it's official. Uh, it is. They have well, like a, yeah. I don't know. Like who knows? I don't. I mean, it's just odd. It's just very yeah. odd. I think yeah his creativity and his perspective and what he brings to, I guess, to any venture that he he's a part of is going to be interesting. He, yeah. He's developed in such a way to where, yeah, I mean, I, I think Kanye could have a quote unquote comeback or whatever that means. Uh, if Mel Gibson can have a comeback, why can't Kanye? Kanye didn't do it, say half the crazy things that Mel, Mel Gibson. Gibson. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That just like the Alec Baldwin shit. Mel Gibson Man. said a, a lot of crazy shit. Way worse. Definitely a lot of racist shit, a lot of crazy shit, way worse. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was on everybody's head and nothing happened. Actually, people came out and was like actually congratulating Mel Gibson and saying like how he's a changed person and he's up on like, uh, uh, he's on the upswing. They're doing the same thing with Louis C.K. Yeah. They're doing the same thing instead of like bashing Louis C.K. like they did R. Kelly and Bill, K and Bill Cosby. They're saying like, He's on the up. It's always the difference between uh, white and black. Is like, sure. 
if you're black, it's like a, look at the rise and fall. And if you're white, it's like, look at the fall and then rise, you know? So they always end it on a good note if you're white. And if you're black, it's like, look at how it ended on a bad note, crash and burn, you know? So it's weird. It's it's just very odd, man. But I think Kanye could make a comeback. I seen something hilarious that said Hugh Hefner got out the game just in time. Hey. They said that's how you get out. You got to die. Because he dated like 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds. And... And I agree wholeheartedly with everybody said. I think I have a good, fair point of view. I think we all have a good, fair point of view of both sides. But I'm like, yeah, I really do see it. And I think a lot of uh, white kids don't have anybody in their life telling them, like, nah, this is why shit is racist and this is why shit is not racist. It's like when there's kids, I'm talking about the new generation who are on the internet and shit, like, oh, why is everything got to be about race? It is about race, and to be honest with you. And because... He brought up fair points, and I'm a huge Louis C.K. fan, but Louis C.K. got away pretty decent right now, you know, like, because he's funny. And I'll tell you something, and I'm not going to cut this out. I still listen to R. Kelly music. I'm not saying anything he did was right. I'm going to still listen to music, though. I don't, like, it, it, uh, maybe I won't. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I, I, watch, I watch Louis C.K. stand-up comedy. I listen to R. Kelly. I don't, give, I, I, I don't like him. I think he de- he need, deserves to be underneath the jail, like you said. But, like, yo, maybe we should cut this out. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so, when, like, when it comes yeah. to R. Kelly, I see what you're saying. Like, he definitely has Fire some, music. So, if it's he, fire, it's fire. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely has decent songs as well as, like, Tory Lanez does. So, I can see people's point of view with that. I just think that... That's such like a kind of not really a difficult topic, but like it's, it's so sensitive cool. to some that. people. But it's just like we have to separate the the artistry from the person. Yeah. Like, yes. And that goes with whoever said or have a like, fair of a fair game where it's like, oh, with them. Like, oh, I mean, people still watch Harvey Weinstein's movies. Right. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. Because like, that's going to be the next thing. You know, this yeah. is a Weinstein production. And when he did yeah. 37 movies or like 100 movies and like, yo, we, people don't even acknowledge that y'all are watching his movies every single day. You know? So. Yeah. Every or even, day. Uh, even taking it back to like the distributor or like the people, who, the producers be like, man, you know what Sony did to Michael Jackson? Why are you watching any Sony Product yeah. ever yeah. again. That's a great point. <laughs> because they have so many entities that don't even say Sony on it. Yeah. It's like a different Because kind of they're, they're able to sell it off differently. Because R. Kelly's just an artist on his own. Mm-hmm. But does Jive Records still make money off R. Kelly's records? I believe so. They do. I think so. Yeah. So he's with Jive, right? I'm pretty sure he's with Jive. I don't even know who he was with this whole time. He's with Sony or Jive. He's with, I think they're both the same shit. Anyways, positive shit. Um, I'm hyped about this Barbie movie. I'm going to talk about it more on the next uh, episode because this Greta Girl, which did this movie. You know, why, why can't we talk about the Barbie? Because we got movie? five minutes left, and that wasn't like that wasn't because like I didn't think y'all would like it, but you can. What do you think about the? Uh, yeah, let's end with that then. Let's end with that. Um, the Barbie movie. I think that. What should... do you think it's about to be about? Mm, sorry. Um, I think it's just like her life. I think it's going to be like a real whatever, basically of all the cartoons that we've seen. But there's something deeper that I can't put my finger on that's going on in these trailers. Really? Yeah. Because I know, Steve, you, you were saying like how excited you was about it. Like, Yo. you was like, oh, I can't wait. For the, you got something to say? It's I something. said I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. The no, I'll, I'll, fuck, I'll fuck with you. I, didn't think I, 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 I thought you were. I was like, I, was, I, I know, I know. No, I, know. Continue, continue, continue. No, I, thought no. It, yeah. I just, just thought it was funny how Smooth said um, it's going to be about her life. Yeah. I'm like... I think it's She's just, a Barbie doll. What is the life of a Barbie doll? Yeah, so basically from the trailers, what I've seen, and I agree with you, I think it's going to be something deeper. It's like, it's. I think it's showing when you take yourself out of your own world. Mm, I don't know, something along those lines, though. Because no, but you feel see, free to think because nobody knows what it's about. So yeah, basically. Yeah. Basically. So it's just like, I just think once she snapped out into reality or like into the Matrix... She lost her ability to fly. She was no longer a Barbie and she had flat feet and one fuck Barbie because what if we was born with flat feet? I still can be a Barbie. But anyway, it's it's crazy. It's yeah. something deeper though, for real. But the fact that they went on a pink shortage is just like, mm, what the I hell? know to make this movie, they did That's expand crazy. on that. Can you tell the people real quick what you're talking about? Yeah. So apparently there is now an international shortage on pink paint because they use so much for the Barbie movie. But I'm just like, with technology nowadays, did y'all really have to paint everything? And how much did y'all really have to paint? And how much is still pink? Hey, so we got two minutes left. Zebra. All right, let's end on 
Pink Paint on a lighter note. Thank you guys so much for being on the show. I can't wait to have y'all back. I would love for y'all to be back, honestly. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having I us, man. This is fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. Rockwell Podcast, Tastemakers Tuesdays, Dash Radio. We out of here. Boom. Love y'all. We out. Tasty Tuesday. Thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, we'll see you again next week, same time, same channel. This is the Rockwell Podcast. Tastemakers Tuesdays, you feel me?